Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Shed with me Mark and welcome to another PlayStation Classic tutorial video. This time I'm going to show you how to upgrade from BleemSync 1.0 or 1.0.1 .1 to BleemSync 1.1. Now BleemSync 1.1 if you didn't already know is the brand new version of BleemSync that brings loads of awesome new features. Now I have a list of the features here just to show you so you know exactly what you're getting into but the main one if you look here is the USB OTG support. Check this out guys. This means we can buy ourselves an OTG adapter and for those of you that don't know what an OTG adapter is, it's an adapter that plugs into the micro USB in the power socket in the back of the PlayStation Classic. That means we can free up that front USB. That is a big deal by itself. You can then use two controllers as per the original PlayStation Classic way of doing things. Uh, the annoyance for a lot of people in having to use a USB stick in port two was a big deal and people were having to buy um, things like this, a USB multi-port adapter. Um, you don't need that anymore. You just need an OTG adapter. Now there's lots of different types of OTG adapters and one of them is like this. It's just an angled one. It's quite nice and neat, up to you if you want something like that. I have purchased this kind of octopus looking one, which means I can have multiple USB ports. The reason I went for this one is to kind of future proof myself so that if ever there is Wi-Fi support or Bluetooth support or anything like that, I've got a bunch of extra USBs that I can use for that purpose. For now, I'm going to use it for this and it means that you can pretty much use any USB stick. So all those US USB 3 sticks that you weren't able to use before, the likelihood is now using OTG you'll be able to use them. So things up to like 256 gigabyte of storage you can use and fill it up with PlayStation games and other ROMs from other consoles and use them in RetroArch. Loads, loads and loads of good things come out of this. So OTG is the way forward. I've bought this ready for this tutorial. Now if you're Currently on 0 0.4 or 0 0.7 of BleemSync, I've done an extra video. Uh, I will put a link at the top, I'll put the card there, and I'll put it in the description below. That is how to update from those versions to 1.1. This video is just for you, those of you on 1.0 already who want to go to 1.1. So uh, down here, let's have a look at the other features. There's a bunch of other stuff, including uh, updated compatibility with controllers. But the other big one is the option, new option for adding games to BleemSync. There's been a lot of complaints in the past about the BleemSync UI that you had to browse to via your web browser previously and add games uh, in that you couldn't add multiple games and all that kind of stuff. It was a, it was a little bit annoying but they have now changed it so we have a folder on the USB once we've done the update uh, called transfer which is where we literally just throw Q and bin files into or ISOs, IMGs or PBPs. This is so much easier and means you can throw multiple games in one go. So that's a massive update. Uh, the custom cover images are also another thing that you can do via that that process. So when you up when you chuck in those bin and Q files into that folder and plug it into the USB in the PlayStation, it will automatically put the game in the carousel and put the right cover art for it. Now, in order to do that, you do need to download the covers and put them on the USB as well. But I will go through all of that within this process. So moving down, there's a bunch of other stuff, including RetroArch playlist generation. That's a big one for some people. A new version of RetroArch. Custom application launchers. This is a big one. This is another big one for you. Uh, so custom application launchers for the stock UI means that you can have a button or an icon, whatever you want to call it, there that you can click on that will take you directly to RetroArch. So if you don't like the splash screen that shows Bleem Sync and RetroArch, you can actually just go straight to the stock carousel and you have an icon in there that you click on and it will take you to RetroArch from there. So it's a slightly different way of doing things. I'm sure there's loads to come from this in the future where other people will be putting other uh, tiles in there for other things. But for now, it does let you launch RetroArch and it lets you go back to the BleemSync splash screen that shows you BleemSync and RetroArch from different icons. But I will show you that once we've installed it. So that's about it for now. Those are the main big features. They are huge. If you are wanting OTG, if you are wanting a new way of transferring games onto your uh, BleemSync install, brilliant. Very, very happy with this. The guys over at BleemSync have absolutely outdone themselves with this. It's a brilliant new version. So 
here we go guys I've got the website here and if we browse down here to upgrading from bleemsync 1.x we can see exactly how to do it it's very very simple okay so I've got my USB in my computer already this is my 1.0 install so all you have to do at this stage plug a USB into your PC and make sure you get this screen up okay so I've only got one game in there at the moment it was Metal Slug X and I transferred that via Bleemsync UI so let's first of all we have to download the new Bleemsync zip package I've got that here as you can see then uh, you have to extract the folders from the zip to your USB overwriting any existing folders okay so let's grab these two we chuck them onto the USB like that and let it copy on it shouldn't take too long Okay, so now that those files are copied across, very, very simply, we just remove the USB stick from our PC and we plug it into the PlayStation Classic. Make sure the power is off, as always, when you plug this in and power it on after the fact. Power on, let's wait for the light and then we press the power button. So let's skip over onto our PlayStation Classic here. <clears throat> And you'll see the update start to take note. Creating file system backup. So the first thing it does is create a full backup, which does take a few minutes. So bear with this process. There's a couple of things we have to do after this, but let this finish first fully. Do not disconnect your PlayStation Classic for any reason. It may take a while, so don't think it's crashed uh, unless it takes about an hour. And finally, at this stage, you should then see the screen that says the initial hack is now complete. The console will restart in five seconds. That means everything's done. Uh, the console will power off and you'll see an orange light. Remove your USB stick and plug it into your computer. So let's remove that from the PlayStation Classic. Let's plug it into our PC. And then we need to back up the files that were created, these backup files. We need to back them up to a location that's secure. So I'm just going to do it to my desktop just so I can show you. If you go to backup here under the Bleem Sync folder, backup, and just copy that whole folder and paste it somewhere safe. You might want to chuck this on a, another USB stick or you might want to put it somewhere else. I've just copied it to my desktop for now. Okay, so the next step you need to take is to download this custom kernel. Um, I've already downloaded it. I've got it here, as you can see, lboot.epd. And all you have to do is put it in the update folder on your USB stick. Okay, so if I go BleemSync, update, and then I copy this to this folder, that's ready to go. As you can see, it says safely remove the USB from your computer and plug it back into your console. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so the USB is back in my console. Let's just plug it back in the power again and wait for the light. Power it on and let's head on back over to the PlayStation Classic. So at this stage, the console will count down from five before performing the kernel update. Now it's a little bit confusing because I just did that and it didn't do it because I've done it on this PlayStation Classic during my testing. But for you, you will see the countdown from five. Uh, as you can see here, during the upgrade, the console will turn off. So it'll literally turn off and the, the light will go off and then it will turn back on. The LED will flash green and then turn off once more. When the LED is returned to orange, the upgrade is now complete. Turn the console back on and it will now boot to the BleemSync boot menu. So that's it. That is literally all you have to do at this stage to get BleemSync 1.1 functioning. There is another thing that I need you to do at this stage so as not to confuse things later. And that is to take the USB back out of your PlayStation Classic, put it in your PC, and then go to the link that I will provide in the description for the artwork. So this is really important to do at this stage because what you'll find is if you don't put the cover art on first, then you may get some confusion and get default thumbnails and what have you for the games that you transfer onto your BleemSync install. I'm gonna grab the regional case thumbnails. Uh, I already have actually, I should have it here. So once you've downloaded it inside that zip file, you'll find a folder called covers. So all you have to do is go back onto your install here Go to BleemSync, OPT, PSC Transfer Tools, and as you'll see there, you'll have covers. In your covers folder, you'll just have default. Copy the rest of covers over 
to the PlayStation Classic. Now, bear with this, it's gonna take some time. There are over nine and a half thousand files, so it'll probably take about five minutes. So now that you've done the initial install, we can do the bit that you've all been waiting for, and that's to move it onto a bigger USB 3 stick so that we can use it via the OTG cable. This is the big news, and we're gonna do it now. So first of all, you need to format your USB 3 drive and make sure it is XFAT or NTFS. I would suggest XFAT and uh, label it Sony. Right, let's format that. Be careful with when you're formatting stuff, obviously all the time, because you don't wanna format either of your main drives or if you've got three or four drives, yeah, these are getting full. I do need to have a clean up. Um, so that's empty. I've still got this one plugged in, which is F, and that is the BleemSync 1.1 install. So let's copy all of that across to our USB 3. Okay, so that's everything copied across onto a USB 3 stick, a proper USB stick. None of this USB 2 stuff. It's onto a brighter future with USB 3 and OTG. So we've done Bleem Sync, we've done the covers, and moving on, we need to transfer a couple of games onto our PlayStation Classic. The best suggestion I can give you at this stage is to remove the USB 2 stick so that you don't confuse the two, because that's exactly what I've just done. And open up the USB 3 stick before you transfer any games on. So this is my folder, this is the USB 3 stick. I need to open up the transfer folder and then copy a game across. So I'm just gonna copy Castlevania into that folder and you know it's USB 3 because it's super quick in comparison to that old USB 2. All right, so I'm just gonna do a couple of games because I don't wanna waste your time looking at me loading games on, but I need to give you a couple of examples to show you how it works. Right, so those are done. Our USB 3 is absolutely ready, 100% ready. So pop it out of your PC, grab your OTG adapter, and plug the USB 3 into one of the spare ports. Now, if you've just got a single adapter, obviously there's only one port. But if you have one of these multi that doesn't really matter, just plug it into one of the spare ones. Next thing to do is take the power out the back of the PlayStation Classic, that's the micro USB cable, and plug that into the female micro USB on the OTG adapter. Right, let's just plug that in there. So now you've got power going in, you've got your USB 3, and then at the top, obviously, the micro USB. Take your PlayStation Classic again and plug the power into the back, like so. What you'll see is the power come on, and then we can power on the PlayStation Classic. Right, let's switch on over to our PlayStation, as so. We should see it boot up. Intel 1.1 using OTG and all that lovely stuff. And our game should transfer across like this. Look at that, it's done. Okay, we know we're on 1.1 because we've got the L1 settings at the top. So if I just press L1 on the controller, here you go, look at this. We can mess about with settings. Uh, we've got boot disable health warning. So that's the health warning that comes up before you get to the carousel. Boot the menu, boot menu music, uh, you can turn that off quick boot you can turn that on etc etc there's a whole load of stuff in here um, probably the most useful ones are the here the EMMC and USB you can have the 20 original games as per 1.0 um, I've got all these set already I think from my 1.0 install so I don't need to change anything at this stage so let's just open up bleem sync and let's double check that our games have imported okay and that they run okay there we go, so there's Castlevania, it's got the cover art, the game is there, and the other one, what did I put in there? Spyro the Dragon, let's uh, let's open that and let's see if it works okay, so let's boot up Spyro. So there we go, I've cut out that long intro sequence and as you can see, Spyro is up and running beautifully. Alright, I don't need to show you any more than that, but what a beautiful game. Okay, so that's Spyro, that's BleemSync 1.1, that's our OTG adapter all up and running. We can now have two controllers plugged into the front of the PlayStation and we can use USB 3. Now please note, the old method of using BleemSync UI will not work with the OTG adapter plugged in. You can only transfer games via the transfer tool method, so putting them into that folder. But I think you'll agree with me that this is a much better method. It's much quicker and easier and you can transfer multiple games in one go. It's very, very easy in that respect. 
effect. So uh, if you miss the UI, then there's pr there's a way you can get that back up and running, which is by putting the USB stick in the front of the PlayStation and then powering it on the regular way without the OTG adapter. And then you can use that UI again. But I'm sure that from what I've read in the comments previously, that you guys won't be that bothered by this and you're happy with the folder transfer method. So that is it. That is literally all you have to do to get BleemSync 1.1 up and running and use all these wonderful new features. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for lots more. I will continue making these type of videos for the future. And uh, make sure to drop a like on this video if you've enjoyed the content and it's been useful. We do have lots of social media avenues including Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and we do have a website as well. I will leave all the links in the description below. We'd love for you to go and follow us. I do like to put little teasers out about Bleem Sync and the like on Twitter. So it's good if you are following us because then you'll get those first. Thank you again so much for watching. I will see you next time.